It's so good to know you're there. This is Art and Leisure. Every week, we're here celebrating creativity in the arts. My name is Chioma Okwara. Let's start right away. Festus Adeyemi is an art lecturer at the Federal College of Education Technical at Kokam. Living and working in Lagos inspired him to do a research on the transportation system in Lagos. He showed 30 art pieces in an exhibition titled Between the Lines. Let's see this whole exhibition. The 30 art pieces on display focused on one subject, transportation in Lagos State. As so we are all aware, uh, transportation system has been uh, a sort of, um, uh, you know, pain to the, co to the community, the landscape, the roads, the commuters, me and you, and, uh, and the city at large. And so this, you know, has protracted over time. And so the, the desire in me to bring to be part of the solution in this change era. Festus Adeyemi used brushes, crayons, pens and pencils to depict everyday life in Lagos. This is a downfall and the traffic light. Um, the downfall people are very, very useful. The downfall buses and the drivers. But uh, when it comes to obeying the traffic light, they are always in haste. This is a tricycle, a popularly known as a Marua. It's also known as Kekena Pep. They are trying to organize themselves by queuing up for passengers to, um, uh, to enter. So they are like at rest, you know, trying to wait on their turn, you know, as people are coming. Um, I like the beauty in the fact that the thing is tricycle and the thing is uh, well manipulated. Uh, you know, some of them could be very careless, but we, I can tell you that they have really helped in the ease of transportation in Lagos State. However, they needed to be curtailed so that some of the excesses um, will, be, uh, will be stopped. And this is uh, titled National Go Slow. National Go Slow. Um, you can see that the map of Nigeria uh, is there. And uh, the go slow, we have some go slow rides coming in Lagos here. But it's got that there are also a lot of go slow coming around from the northern part of the country. They hold up uh, right in uh, Meduguri as regards uh, insurgents. It's also uh, causing a lot of traffic because so many people are moving to this part of the country. And so this is a national hold up. And so hold up anyway, affecting so many things. You know, a lot of uh, social amenities. He employed geometric planar representations by using rectangles of various sizes to create dynamic partitions on the canvas surface. This amplifies uh, a breakdown using my uh, style of uh, the Piet Modrin half, you know, cu cutting things into bits to make a hole. When a bus is broken down like that, people will be inside because nobody wants to risk their life to come to the express road to come and push. So the driver, uh, sorry, probably one person, maybe the conductor, and one other person will you know, volunteer to start pushing. Possibly another driver somewhere that consider the, the vehicle a, a hindrance. So, and they begin to push. You know, this has also caused a lot of, there could be a lot of accident happening. This is tied to uh, bomber to fender. And also talking about uh, night um, traffic in which a lot of dangers are associated with. Festus Adeyemi is a principal lecturer at Federal College of Education Technical, Akoka. What will he do differently if he was at the helm of affairs of the Lagos State Transport Management Authority? First of all, um, we should bring to the fore to the people that this is a serious problem and which is not happening in the developed world. Having said that, um, we, we now um, try to orientate people, you know, by letting people, you know, imbibe the spirit of patience. And of course, some, um, some cars and buses are not actually in good order. And uh, of course, the roads must be fixed. Since he's not in a position to implement all he has said, he's used drawings, acrylic and mixed media paintings to speak to every road user. A little patience can really go a long way. And uh, for, for government, I just want them to, they, some things that they can do for us. The roads are not in good order. 
of course, um, the peop some people are supposed to cross the overhead crossing, make use of the overhead crossing, and they cross the road. In the process, the, the traffic will be, you know, will build up. So people should possibly, I want to appeal to the government to keep some people, so, uh, the uh, law enforcement agent permanently where they are supposed to be so that they can, you know, arrest and persecute, you know, some people that want to commit suicide, as in, you know, trying to do what they are not supposed to do. People from all walks of life came to see this exhibition. Mr. Festus Adeyemi is a very hardworking lecturer and uh, his research on this transportation system in Lagos is a very welcome idea. I have seen on display great work of art. I'm not an artist myself, but when I see a good thing, I can recognize it. Festus Adeyemi turned 50 recently. This whole exhibition is his own way of giving back to society. I want to first of all thank God that uh, I'm 50. Uh, many of my colleagues did actually believe that uh, I'm 50, but uh, I think uh, maybe I would like to remove my cap so that I don't really look. Uh, I want to be much more um, gentle and more patient at 50. And I also want to be a solution to problems. His wife of 22 years is not an artist. Initially when we got married, you know, the whole place will look damp hard with paints. The rug will be messed up with paints. And I say, oh, this is a big work for me. But I, as time goes on, I got used to it. When the paint is being poured on the rug, I make sure I clean it immediately. Then, uh, you know, there are ways by which artists used to dress. So at times when they put on some dress, maybe the top is not matching on with the trousers, I would say, ah, no, please, you can't go out with this type of attire. You say, ah, I'm an artist. I said, yes, I know you're an artist. You must change this. This will go with this. But Angov is now 50 years old, which we are celebrating together. Between the Lions exhibition has not only focused on problems, but also preferred solutions. Festus Adeyemi, a full-time lecturer and an accomplished artist, wants to see a Lagos without transportation challenges. <music>
uh, that's uh, Fela's uh, mother and the Reverend Kuti, Fela's father, actually lived, where most of those stories actually you know, took place. We shot in GCI, that's Government College in Ibadan. The two hours, 30 minutes movie has more than 600 cast and crew. The place where we had to work very hard was getting the children, because finding child actors, training child actors, people who can actually deliver the goods. Children have the innocence, um, but you also have to do a lot of groundwork. You have to work on them a lot. The children cast couldn't make it to this premiere because school is in session. I play the role of S.A. Wale Shoyuka's father. He was a disciplinarian and all his hobbies uh, were transferred to uh, Wale Shoyuka. I was the assistant director and uh, I played the role of Boko also, one of um, Wale Shoyuka's um, father's friend. It's one of those who can say anything and get away with it around him. And uh, his family and uh, the Shoyinka's family were very close. Teacher Ogunjimi, teacher Ogunjimi is um, a teacher in Wale Shoyinka's father's school and um, a bit close, intelligent, sensible, and highly principled. My character is Kenberry. Actually, I always thought that Kenberry was really the power uh, the power box behind, uh, you know, Fumila and some Kuti. This is, this is the real politician. This is the motivator of the whole thing. She's, the, she's more uh, what combating, I think the word is, than anybody else. This movie shot in nine months, gapped 400 million naira, is a must see for everyone. If you want to connect with the past, um, stories have been told, but you want to see the stories. Uh, some of the characters uh, that are actually featured in this film are people. Uh, they are people that those who are alive today know. Uh, the Ramson Kutis, some of their grandchildren are very much around. People knew them are around. The Shoyinkas, you know, and apart from that, uh, the memories of some of the events, like the Agba Women's Riots of 1945. Uh, which we actually capture in the story. These are memories that people actually retain. And I believe that a lot of people were very anxious to see our case so that uh, what they've heard about, they can actually see how it actualizes in the form of a film. Professor Wale Shoyinka's first son represented the family in this premiere. It's a, quite a unique feeling. Uh, I think it's a normal human uh, psychology to feel that the world pretty much began from when you can remember, uh, and then when we start getting to understand history and discovering the world as it was before we came along, uh, that's a real eye-opener. But then what is really fun is when you can look and see maybe the events surrounding how eventually you even came to be, all the different things that had to happen, uh, all the dangers that had to be survived uh, for your you know, parents or parents to get to the point where uh, you uh, became a reality. So for me, that's going to be the most uh, interesting thing. This adaptation has the blessing of the Nobel laureate. One wonders how he feel watching himself on the big screen. It's very difficult to predict because there's so many different factors that would affect how he uh, receives it. Of course, he's in support of the project. Uh, I know Dakwa has had a close relationship uh, with him, but not a close working uh, relationship to the point that uh, Prof had uh, any kind of major you know, creative control. So in that respect, it, it, it's impossible to know what he's expecting and how that will compare with what he eventually sees. From the trailer and from the comments I've heard, it's a very well put together film very cleverly done, very faithful to, to history and faithful to the book. So uh, I would think that um, Prof would probably enjoy it. I think he would like to be here, sneak in, sit at the back, have a little giggle at some of the things he got up to, uh, actually watching himself uh, doing it. He may see one or two things that also really jar with his memory. He may have a particular uh, memory or knowledge of a particular event. and. He will see the artistic license that has had to be deployed on screen. So maybe those parts may be of less uh, interest to him. 
but all in all, I think he'll be very, very curious to see it. And I think when he sees it, I think anybody really, if you get to the point where people are making your life into a film, I think you will come to the project with a fairly flexible frame of mind. You will not be asking them to get it right as you remember it. You will be asking them to document history faithfully. And if the detail, the details then become less important, it's more that it is a documentation of an early part of somebody's life. And as long as it's generally accurate, then I'm sure he'll be fine with it, very fine. After this premiere, the film will be taken around Nigeria and the world so that more people can see it. We are planning to do the film in French, to do French uh, subtitles. We are planning to do it in uh, Portuguese. We are planning to do it in Arabic and all that. So the work is much. But uh, much of what's going to happen after now is not us. We are going to be able to send um, you know, the next phase of the work to those who are into translation, people can market and all that. So we'll, we'll be able to retract and go back to make the next story. Ake is an amusing and interesting film adaptation of one of the most captivating childhood reminiscences of all time. Good to have you back. I enjoy you to make out time and go to the cinema to see the movie. Ake? All right, still celebrating Nigeria. Something big, something big is about to unfold. <laughs> I'm particularly happy because young people are preferring solutions to our problems. About a year ago, nine young men and women researched and also embarked on the project tagged Nigeria Rebirth National Art Project. I'm happy to announce that today, a painting that stands at 9 by 14 feet is a reality. Watch this. Over a year ago, Ambassador David Ocean Ibrahim and his team noticed a problem and resolved to solve it. The average Nigerian person has a thinking problem. We are more emotional. We just react sentimentally at the expense of thinking. And so we, we wanted to bring out something that can ev invoke a thought pattern. Visual arts is the vehicle to drive this truth home. I grew up in the midst of artists. Even when I was getting married, my best friend is, I mean, that we grew up together with is an artist. And I grew up to appreciate art. We came up with this concept that having a, an art piece of this nature, it will serve like a software that we can insert, download into the psychic of Nigerians, especially children. The Nigeria Rebirth National Art Project will make us think. No nation that ever is developed, America, Russia, Britain, Great Britain and all that. Their development was founded on the premise of uh, thinking. One artist was chosen from each state to be part of this groundbreaking exercise. There was an online interview conducted whereby um, the um, prospecting um, artists were expected to forward in their um, soft copies of their previous works, their CV so that assessment and um, selection will be made. And um, I think it was um, very technically done in the most professional manner. They converged on Abuja. Six artists can work on the canvas at the same time. They had already done the research, done the um, graphic um, um, concept of what we are to paint. Everything, the design had been put in that small thumbnail. So what the artist needed was to follow it up. Artists coming from outside Abuja will spend um, at least two days based on your level of um, strength. Many of them are happy working on this project. Being here is a privilege and I see myself that the only way I can reach out is through this visual aspect. It's more of a realism approach and um, that's what we've actually been working with and um, tried as much as possible to adapt. What was paramount in my mind then was doing my, putting in my best and making sure that what I was drawing or painting had the exact resemblance of what I was asked to do. Based on this uh, rebirth, you know, it's like making me feel as if myself, I am a, a new person and I'm trying to give out to the society that they should know that change is here and uh, we should effective positively. For 60 days, they were at the Unity Fountain 
and people had the opportunity to interact with them. We've had all sorts of people from different parts of the world. They come over, you know, they were actually invited and they were able to see this thing. One thing I've learned in this whole exercise is even the people that don't even know any, anything about art, they appreciate it. I have a passion to work on this canvas. I have a passion to work because I know we have a very a large people that are going to see it after here, so I put in my best. I see the work as the biggest I have ever met in my life, and so I have to put in my best. From the hard work, it shows Nigerian breaking, breaking out of a bondage, breaking out of shackles, emancipating. I feel very highly honored myself, you know, putting my um, talent and um, name on a national piece like this. This is not just an artwork. This is the future. This is the way forward. This is the way to let people know that Nigeria have come of age. What will the finished piece look like? For the purpose of your, your personality and your power of your program and the effect it has had over Nigeria, let me reward you with this information. If you look in your mind, just visualize what is here. We have the center image is the image of a, a newborn baby coming out of, a, of an eggshell. And this eggshell is the globe. I'm sure you're painting the image. And this baby is coming out in pain, in struggle, in tears. In the process of coming out, there's a lot of drama playing out here. Don't worry, when the movie is out, you'll see it. The unveiling will be loud. The president himself is going to unveil this work. During the unveiling, we are telling him to build a massive art gallery where we will have a Rebet Art School and the work will be there. Other national piece will be displayed there. But we are going to have a school, that art school, Rebet Art School of, Rebel School of Art and Creativity. And so when that uh, structure is built, it's going to be there so people can travel from far to come and see the work. It becomes a tourist uh, uh, specimen. And anytime there is a national event across the country, the work goes to form a backdrop. So that's the picture we are having in mind. Thereafter, the work will travel around the country. It will also be taken to seven nations. This work will not finish because we are going to travel around the world from February. We are taking it around the world to different states and Nigerians in diaspora at a, and at home will be adding their thumbprints. We want to collect possibly up to 20 million thumbprints. For anybody that has their thumbprint, you are also part of the work. You are an artist. 2016, beginning from Dubai, we are taking it around the world. We'll come back to Nigeria, travel around different states. People touch it. From there, we move to other Europe, other parts of the, uh, of the world. And the idea is to tell the world that Nigeria, something new, is happening in the heart of Africa from Nigeria. Prints will be done and displayed at schools and other select public places. 2016, every primary and secondary school in Nigeria, even that in one village in uh, Meduguri, will have a copy of this portrait in their assembly hall. That's one target. We want to use art to begin a revolution, as Oswald said in Nigeria. We want to use it to even stop Boko Haram. We want to use it to change the economy of Nigeria. How that will happen, time will tell. This 9 by 14 feet art piece will tell the story of Nigeria, past, present, and future. Nigeria Rebirth National Art Project is a Nigerian initiative. This shows that Nigerians have solutions to their problems. <music>
Love Nigeria.